I met up with Anna at the port, and she gave me the situation report. The caravan is heavily guarded, but if we can capture the captain, the rest will surrender. Whatever approach I take, the Spartans will back me up. I need to get to the tugboat's bridge. Are you rested? Well, it's time. So try to get on that tugboat. We'll give you cover. Let's go over the plan one more time. Once the tugboat is in our hands, Sam, Idiot, and I will go back to the Aurora, while Artyom, Duke, and Kress take the boat to the bridge. Good luck, everyone. Aboard there. I'll distract them. You get on. Hide here and wait for them to pass. Shoot my ass, though, okay, you avenging angel? Turn back about 20 clicks from there. Fuck those assholes. You're talking about the outpost? Watch out behind you. Yeah, the last time we were there, those fucking so-called vigilant watchmen made a thief out of our bridge. Conveniently, everything was all right while we were unloading the wares, but when the time came to pay up... Damn assholes. Well said. So now, even if they offer a crate of ammo for a piece of bread, I don't care. I'd sooner go to Baku than there. Well, no, they say it's no fun in games over there either. Nobody knows really. There are narrow Everybody spaces between the cargo. Squeeze through them. But we know about Nizhny for sure. See this scar? There you have it. All right, be my guest.
eliminated all the fish. Anyway, the move along is There's a float between the barges. The Climb overboard. High time it started biting. I wish I could catch a little shut eye. Even an hour would do. He's gone now. Move on. So, how long are we going to keep sitting on our thumbs here? Well, Mikhailich is working on it. The generator shuts off all the time. That's because you should have picked up normal spark plugs, not the shit you got. It sure would have saved us a lot of trouble. Well, they aren't so bad. Look how long they lasted. And Ahmed wanted two more clips from you guys, so... But anyway, what's your problem? Hey! Are you in a hurry? Hey. <laughs> this place gives me the creeps. That monster in the river? This shit is too much! He's behind the barrel! <laughs> to keep sitting on our thumbs here. Well, Mikhailich is working on it. The generator shuts off all the time, though. If that's because you should have picked up normal spark plugs, not the shit you got. It sure would have saved us a lot of trouble. Well, they aren't so bad. Look how long they lasted. And Ahmed wanted to... I see the enemy! I saw one looking right at you! to keep sitting on our thumbs here. Well, Mikhailich is working. The generator shuts off all the time. Because you should have picked up normal spark Behind plugs. Behind the crate, can you see it? You got it? There, what is it? Nothing here. <laughs> ah, well, better than an enemy. Hmm. Oh, 
I wish I could catch a little shut eye. Even an hour would do. Don't shoot! Don't shoot! I can pay the, the goods! Take them! You can take the goods! Stay calm! It's us! We don't need your goods! Your tugboat, on the other hand! You can collect it at the bridge if you play your cards right! You got me? Uh, yes, of course! Order your people to stand down and nobody gets hurt! At once! Hey, listen up, people! This is your skipper! Stand down and surrender at once! You did the right thing. It's nice to talk to a smart guy for a change. Now go! <laughs> Great job, Artyom. Artyom, all of our guys are fine. You did great. So? You guys ready to set off? Too late if you're not. We have no time to waste. Good luck, guys. I hope the winds are fair and the waters are smooth. And Artyom, watch it out there. Oh yeah, we are gonna need that luck, all right. Fair winds. Hurra! Man your stations, weigh anchor! We're gonna go about halfway there, then wait in the reeds until about 4 o'clock. We want to get there early in the morning, when the fog is the thickest and they are sleepy after the morning prayer. Artyom, it's Duke. We're on final approach. There. See that fire at the very top? That's the control post. What well, used to be anyway. Now it's a shrine, believe. Closer to God at the top, you see. That's where you have to go. I'll distract the guards now. So, Artyom, shall we move? Whoever gets there first wins. Break a leg. Artyom, Duke, the Aurora is quietly moving into position. We'll be ready to act on your signal. Roger, we're on it. Over. Stay to the flames! It's like you missed the morning sermon. Well, I didn't. One day you are going to get sent to fight demons for the night. Uh, but it's so early. Just tell me what he said. You 
see, it's Simon's back. Back? But he and Kirill vow to eradicate all the demons. You don't just come back after that. Well, ask anyone. They got captured by heathens, but a heretic, one of the new ones, freed them. Ah, old Simon just got cold you know, feet, that's all. Thinking, all the stories people tell not to go. No, he did not. He came other. back and with a huge fuss at the church. Now he will be praying for that heretic hey, instead of run. Simon. You got that yeah. everyone.
And tell the driver to keep it slow. The bridge is in shambles, so don't stop. But the bridge might collapse. You are not going to here. We've reached an agreement. They will let us through if we don't shoot and move slowly. And don't stop. I repeat, do not stop. Over. Artyom, let's jump! Well, that's a job well done, huh? <laughs> We left Volga behind. The endless expanses of Russia stretch before us now. The bridge dwellers had finally decided to believe that we were not demons and let us pass. Anna was right. We invaded their world, and it's not up to us to destroy it, no matter how stupid it may seem. Electricity is a sin. Is that really worse than the lies we were told in the metro? about how the whole world was dead and there was nowhere to go? Everybody in the tunnels bought that convenient lie. Once we reach Yamantau, we will at least know if that lie was justified, since so far we haven't met any signs of enemy occupation. Artyom, Artyom, wake up, dear. Is he up yet? Artyom, the colonel wants you on the bridge. See you later. Come on, wake up. You did a great job there. We are not home anymore, so we'd all better act like you did. Smoothly. It's not like there's many of us humans left now. So I hope someday we will be able to trust others just because. Because they are people too. Am I bothering you? Sorry, I'm in a philosophical mood today. Stay here for a bit, Artyom. This is great. I wish I could stay like this forever. Artyom, when you climbed those ruins back in Moscow, or with your radio, did you imagine our life on the surface at all? A home, for one. A place where we could live, a log cabin on the outskirts of a forest. Or how about a bungalow on an ocean shore? Well, you know, there's something great in simply going anywhere like this, together. Through the abandoned stations, the ruins, the wasteland. Especially in our own private compartment. Thinking back, isn't this our honeymoon trip? <laughs> It certainly feels like one, even though it's a bit late. We've only had some honeymoon sorties at best so far. You know, I had a talk with Katya. I'm sitting here recalling that bridge and those people there, and we've been sitting underground for 20 years. And they haven't. So what? These are not the same people who used to build cities, planes, and space rockets. They are just like us in Metro, only even more dejected. They are, essentially, slaves. For real. They work all day and pray all night, always watched, always directed. Everything is under control. Everything is decided by the community. Well, I mean, Silantius. They don't even have any property. Even their socks belong to the community. They're just entranced with him, with his ridiculous lies about electricity, 
Of course, not everyone got fooled easily, but if they dare ask questions, they get penance. Exercising an electric demon with prayer and the cross. But that's a death sentence. How is a flashlight dangerous? Or a radio? But no, they shun it all. They hide and keep praying. How can you even make people believe this ridiculous garbage within just a few years? <sighs> people in general start believing lies surprisingly easily, don't they? As long as those lies are convenient or at least familiar. Take us in Metro. All right, we haven't met the occupying forces yet. If we disregard that shirt I found on an antenna... <coughs> Katya and Crest never met them either. But maybe they are still out there somewhere. And if they are, then they didn't even tell us about them back home. They didn't tell us that the war was still on. They just made us believe that there's no life anywhere outside of Metro. They've been lying to us. Lying non-stop. All this time. Were their intentions good? Perhaps. But the Metro is a castle built on lies. <sighs> Damn, am I angry. And so far, no matter how far we get, we haven't met a single enemy. Isn't that strange? But Father won't have a word of it. Stay vigilant. Be careful. The enemy never sleeps. You know, I love my father. A whole lot. No matter what. But what if everything he's been told is just another layer of lies? I hope we'll find out how deep this rabbit hole is once we get to Yamantau. <sighs> well... What do you know? I do feel better now, after telling you. Thanks for hearing me out, Artyom. Let's just sit here a little. Alright, run along. Dad wanted something. We've been on the road for. I've been listening to the radio too. And there was not a single transmission about any occupying force. There's so much regular chatter. 
so many stories. Dad says all those are coded transmissions, that they all have hidden meaning, but... Why would they be so secretive? Why aren't they using this railroad? Why don't they at least control its key junctions? Why did they not install any roadblocks? If they are even out here. This is the main transport artery, after all. Maybe they are not here at all. Maybe they never came here, or they are already gone. Though, where to? Remember? Neither Katya nor Crest have ever met them. Though, we seem to be doing just fine even without them. It's like the Middle Ages. That Salentius is treating people like slaves, getting them killed. I can't believe they had it worse without his lies, nonsense, and human sacrifices. And us? We had been living down there for so many years, fighting each other. And nobody even thought you could live outside. Ah, hi, Artyom. See my new place? Fit for a king, I must say. Ah, what do you think of this workbench, eh? Everything is within reach, yet there's so much space left. Most of the stuff you and the guys found outside and gave to me went into making this workshop happen. So thank you. We'll have to keep pitching in like this, too. 
Looks like we're facing a long journey, and useful things like ammo or equipment don't grow on trees. Plus, the further from Moscow we get, the harder they'll probably be to get. So don't forget to collect all the materials you find to keep us going. There's so many things to do. I haven't decided where I'm going to work on the suits, but I'll have to, and soon. And it's high time we fixed our uniforms. Some of our people are starting to look pretty ragged, you know. Well, Duke's plate carrier won't hold the back plate anymore, and he jokes that he's lucky it's not the front one, or else his toes would be in danger. <sighs> Regardless, I am turning this little gang back into a real army. Well, that's it. I bragged enough and won't waste any more of your time. The Colonel summoned you. Well, I have stuff to do too. You guys are fast to break gear, but none too expedient to fix it. Uncle Tokarev! Uncle Tokarev! <sighs> what would you like to ask, Nastya? Uncle Tokarev, do you have a sewing machine? No, I don't. But how are you going to fix the suits then? Well, like everyone else, I take a thread and a needle, and I use a sail stitch. Wow, cool! Can you teach me? I sure can, but later. I've got work to do. Will you let me fix Sam's rifle strap? Well, sure thing. Oh, but under supervision. Sam is so strict, you know. And Uncle Sam isn't strict at all. He's kind. <laughs> all right, look here. I'll show you once. Now we do this. Yes. Don't rush it here. Oh, a smoke break. That's good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> This is one mean smoke. Damn, this is rough. Well, <clears throat> nothing we couldn't take. <clears throat> well, you are the right kind of guys. You, the Colonel, Duke, that guy did a swell job on that bridge. And now he's bragging about it like a child. He's a child, really. No, a child. But he's good. So, uh, yeah, what did I want to say? Uh, yes. Uh, thank you. You you people accepted me, and, and I... Uh, I'm a simple guy. I, I, I will pay the debt back, okay? So, how do you like it out here after your tunnels? Freedom, huh? Sure thing, so much space. It feels too empty to me, though. Just reeds and ruins and those damn mutants. Hate them. Phew. No, you guys are gonna see the government. So, Bratucha, don't be mad, but just tell me, what the hell do you even need them for? Well, of course, it might be interesting to take a look, but... Throughout all of my rambling, I only met two kinds of ex-government people. Dead ones and gang leaders. And let me tell you, the latter are much worse than your typical bandit. They just have to make a speech before doing something off. So what I mean, I, I didn't really care about the government even before the war, much less now, when everything's nonsense gone to shit. So what for, really? I'm a simple man, Artyomich. I told I'm with you. That means I'm with you for the long haul. But I'd much rather find a nice place to live at than go see the government. Of course, they could give us luxury bunkers or something. Well, Artyom, you seem cold. Go get warmed up a bit. I'll smoke some more. I have stuff to think about. Or just stay. <laughs> we have enough space now. Be careful here. See? 
Yes. Artyom, come on in and have a seat. Stepan's putting on a live performance here. So, Artyom, are you up for a jam? Come on, pick the guitar up. Well, the maestro is about to impress you. Thank you, Stepan. I'm sorry to ask, Katya, but Nastya's father. He's dead, isn't he? Does Nastya know? He is. I tried keeping it a secret. Told her he left for the market. Around three days passed, and I still kept it in. I just sat there with a needle in my hand and didn't see anything. It was all black before my eyes. And then she snuggles up to me and says, You should cry, Ma. You will feel better. Seeing he used to say it. So I cried and cried. She knows. She knows it all. I'm sorry, Katya. I'm so sorry. Let me tell you how we ended up at the bridge. We used to live in northeast from here, quite close if you go in a straight line. But it took us a month. Everything's bomb to rubble out there. Yermak asked me and I told him. Sini used to say there are lots of military factories out there. Not just military, of course, general industry. And now you can't pass through there even with filters. The radiation is so high. No railway either, just crater upon crater. We were quite far, but our counter still went crazy. One route appeared intact. There was nothing to bomb. So we used that one, thinking we'd get further to the west, but... But of course they did not let us cross the bridge with the diesel. They said it was satanic. They were ready to let us stay if we gave them the diesel to cleanse it. So we stayed. And then, we couldn't leave, even if we wanted. That old goat, Father Silentius, brainwashed everyone, so they would just pray and bow non-stop. They broke our diesel down with their bare hands and threw it into the river. Purification. And on top of it, they gave us trouble for not helping them. Senia went to check what was going on, and there were only locals there. Because Silentius, at the Skatina, had sent our people away to test them. He said that if they wanted to be truly accepted, they had to defeat a demon. Senia went to stop them. But it was too late. He only found burnt rags. And then they sent him to do the same. He never came back. Katya, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. Well, you really didn't. What's done is done. <clears throat> <sighs> it kind of got so glum in here. 
Hmm. Perhaps you, Stepan, could play us something. Sure thing! Artyom did most of the work. <laughs> <laughs> that he did, uh, yeah, he did. But you don't have to interrupt my lies. You asked me about the Vest yourselves. You play so well. All right, go on. So I see Artyom get to the door, and I think it's time I came down. So I do. But something just holds on to me. What does? How should I know? It's dark. Nobody around, but I can't move. And those locals kept going on about Tsar something. So I thought I was in a kind of a bind. So? So I just unfastened the safety and left down. There was that shed down there. The roof was uh, kind of close. Uh, 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 and what about the Tsar? Oh, blue! the Tsar was huge. Scary as shit. There was this rusty bolt, and my carrier got snagged on it. <laughs> well, you Duke are lucky you already have a nickname. <laughs> That's hilarious. And what was next? Oh, <laughs> next. Next we jumped that old preacher of theirs. Well, Artem did most of it. <laughs> he swooped in like a hawk! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's good. While well, I was clamoring about those beams and fighting that side. <laughs> oh, I'm killing myself! <laughs> well, he basically solved the whole problem. True that. Good job, Artyom. Yeah, you both did well. Crest also. <laughs> sure. He did a swell job distracting those guards. I almost wet my pants with laughter when they started hauling that timber. <laughs> he's an artist. Yeah, he's a great guy. He all came out on top of the game. And that calls for what? A trick. You nailed it. You truly are one of us now, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Will you be joining us? Nah, not now. I'll have some at dinner. Well, you'll have to catch up then. Sure thing. Anyways, we will just have a little as a warm-up now. <laughs> Great! Ah, that's some good stuff. Guys, there's something I've been thinking about. What does everyone expect to this trip? Personally, I want to come back and tell Sveta of my adventures. So that she'd look at me with her huge gray eyes without blinking and keep saying, You're such a hero, darling. <laughs> so you're expecting heroics and scars. That works. And why did you come? Well, my heart is aching for true romance. But in the Metro, all women want a solid relationship, a reliable husband, a real provider. <laughs> Enough of that smug smile. It's unbearable. Not that I've had much better luck here so far. As soon as Katia came aboard, Stepan started cooing around her like a peacock. <laughs> you should be happy. Katya is a tough girl. You'd be under her thumb in no time. 
That is unlikely. I'm not the kind of man to upstage his friend in a contest for a lady. Especially when that friend promises to break my arm! <laughs> Catch my stroke of luck soon enough. There in Yamanta, women from all over the country have already gathered, waiting for yours truly. <laughs> How about you, Demir? What made you go? Well, uh, at first I just went along with you guys, uh, the Colonel, but even then I thought, this is my chance to make my dream come true. A chance to see Kazakhstan, my people. But first, we must come back to Moscow, because it isn't fair. People must know that they've put up with enough. They are free. They can live outside now. What do you think about that, idiot? I'm with you, Demir. Yet, freedom is not so simple. There was this freedom fighter, Che Guevara. He died under 40. Comrade Mao, whose book you've been perusing on the other hand, was a strict ruler but lived a long life. Well, we should have expected that from you. <laughs> Weird thing, though, is that you are called idiot. <laughs> I know. It's by his own choice. Because he's so fond of Chekhov. <laughs> Chekhov, too, of course. But it's Dostoevsky for the most part, said my friend. <laughs> sure. I read the book, too. It's just that I mix him up a lot. Chekhov wrote about that son of Austerlitz. A wounded officer. Powerful imagery. <laughs> you are just killing me. <laughs> How about you, Uncle Sam? Got dreams? You know, I just want to ride my board again. Spark a joint up on a beach. <laughs> Catch that wave. Deep inside, under a grizzled metro dweller, there's still a relaxed Californian inside me. Ah, get out of here! <laughs> so you know, before Dad talked me into joining the Corps, I used to wear my hair long. He told me they'd make a decent citizen out of the total disappointment that I was, and sent me to college once I was discharged. I joined, and they sent me to the Middle East. Wow, so do you hope your guys would pick you up? I don't see them around. Yeah, I don't hold my breath for my guys. Once this mission's over, I'll submit my discharge papers. I'll reach the ocean, and there, find a ship, maybe? Oh, yeah. Just imagine it. You arrive on that ship, and they go like... Ah! The Russians are coming! <laughs> <laughs> you are one of us now. You don't really need to go anywhere. At least don't put your Ushanka on. They will sink you on sight. <laughs> I won't. Though I will take my balalaika with me. <laughs> balalaika. <laughs> well... Who has any expectations for our reception at Yamantau? Well, your expectations, Elyosh, are quite obvious, huh? Scantily clad junior officer ladies on the rolling red carpet. Yeah, I'm a simple guy. How about you guys? Well, uh, I hope they will answer a few questions. For example, if there is not a single American within hundreds of miles from Moscow, save for our friend Samuel here, why stay underground? I'd put it a bit differently. Did you, dearest High Command gentlemen, know that we in Moscow had to spend 20 years underground? Oh, by all means, you can ask those while I'm enjoying my briefing with the junior officer ladies, huh? <laughs> I don't know. I'm in the mood for a road trip. Oh, we got ourselves a true traveler here. Yeah. We will have to live and see. You are right.
talk with the Ark. And all thanks to Dokoran, he got the decoder working. Ark, come in. Come in, Ark. Over. Uh, this is Ark? Uh, identify yourself. Uh, uh, over. This is Colonel Svetoslav Mionnikov speaking. I'm in command of a special operations force. We have received your signal and are currently heading your way. Do you copy? Over. Yes, yes. I hear you loud and clear. Who am I talking to? How do I address you? The Deputy Chief of Communications Department, Major Ivanov. A, a moment. Oh, yes, Major. I understand that the checkup is in order. Great, Colonel. Um, Emelico? Simply capital. I am sorry for the lack of trust, but as you know, the situation is dire and the enemy is always ready to strike. I do understand, Mitchell, and I hope that you can tell the leadership that my people are true to their duty and will be at their full disposal as soon as we arrive. Over. Thank you for the great news. How large is your force, Colonel? I have a squad of the best operatives the special forces have to offer. A squad? Ah, I see. Well, this is great. Great! Yes, we are a large force, but we bring a message of extreme importance. We are heading towards you from Sector K-6 Alpha. Do you have any data on enemy forces we might encounter on the way? Over. In just a moment, I have to check. Uh, K-6, uh, Alpha, you say, uh, as far as I can see, there have been no enemy encounters in reported in the area, Colonel. I regret it. I must end our conversation here, but know that we are waiting for your arrival. I am making my report immediately, and I am sure the Minister of Defense will be eager to see you. This is a great honor. Thank you. Just a few words more, though. Uh, what is the general situation there, Major? Please. Uh, Colonel, sir, you do understand this is classified information. Uh, but I do understand you. We are doing fine. Do not worry. Uh, well, see you in the Ark. Over and out. I serve the people. Over and out. So, do you get this now, you doubting Thomas? <laughs> I'm so excited, my hands are still shaking! The Minister himself! This is incredible! By the way, Artyom, you should take a look at the map. As you can see, we're heading almost straight for the Yamantau complex. Katya and Kress tell me that the line there is in decent condition. Surprising, really. Taking into account the number of priority targets there. So we can hope for smooth sailing from here and right to the very destination. It's not even that far, but our speed depends on the state of the track. So I think it's going to take us quite some time to get there. So, Yermak, where were we? You were saying it's all about the results. Ah, yes. These soft-bellied attitudes must stop. The ends do justify the means. Well, I don't object. But not all ends can be called just. Exactly. And this is why... Why I have been waiting for a chance like this for ages. And now everything seems to be coming together. It's the government. Don't you understand? Oh, but of course. Hmm. You don't seem to uh, quite grasp the importance, which is unexpected, especially after the news you just heard. <clears throat> yes, well, say so there is a government. So what? We spent so many years apart, so why worry now? Ah, but don't you see? They probably knew nothing about us. With the sheer power of enemy strikes directed at Moscow, they never expected so many of us to survive. And now, now we... we get to... get to tell them Moscow still lives! And not only that, it also preserved a functioning civilization! Do you get that? 
All these years, we were fighting a losing battle for mere survival. And now, and now we have a new goal. And what would that goal be? You don't get this, do you? The command center should have all of the command and control networks. All the intelligence. They should know where all the nukes hit. Have complete fallout maps. They have everything. Information rules the world. And Metro is chock full of people. Put two and two together, huh? we could repopulate the country. Yeah, of course not at once. First, we might have to take the country back. But we'll be doing this under the direction of a real government. People with all the necessary skills. And in the end, we will break out of the underground dead end we are in. Uh, it would be nice, sure. By the way, I meant to ask for some time now. How did you learn about the Yamantau bunker, Colonel? Oh, the information about the Ark project I have is beyond a doubt. I'm saying this as a GRU officer. I have colleagues working there, preparing evacuation plans. So I've been briefed into it officially. So, now we just have to get there. And we will. We will. The journey won't be easy, though. <laughs> we were never looking for an easy way. Yes. I've been thinking about that for a long time. The Central Industrial District, a priority target. Katya did confirm my suspicions. The tracks might have survived partially, but the state they're in now is most likely terrible. I think we'll have to fix sections of the track. I think our people can handle it. Besides, I'm sure there will be side tracks. What do you think could have happened in the relatively intact territories in the meantime? That's a good question. Well, we are going to learn it pretty soon. Yes. Yes, that, that we will. Just in case. 
We do, but not the whole set. Just the rough one. We are approaching the Yamantau bunker, the final destination of our long journey. Direct radio contact with the bunker has completely dissolved Miller's resentment towards me for destroying our previous lives. He is eagerly anticipating the meeting with the Minister of Defense he was promised. Probably such things are important for a career officer. The people, though, are less interested. They are asking important questions. Where are the occupying forces? Why is there just wilderness and people gone wild around? What's stopping the government from restoring the country? What was being done in the last 20 years? Miller believes that we'll get all the answers. He will be pardoned, as well as Anna and I. And we will all return home to the Metro. charge while I'm away. Sir, yes, sir. Great. Let's go. Yeah, it's down in this place. Worse than Moscow. Yeah, looks like it. See that crater? Wonder what the yield was on that one. Looks like a hundred to me. Well, your guys used to have three and five hundred ones too. Well, even a hundred seems to have done okay. Now we should not come here. Really? Okay, so 
so where's my welcoming committee in red carpet? I don't get this. Oh, see, nobody home. How about we go back, huh? Bye. Look. Identify yourself. Colonel Miller, here to report to the Minister of Defense. And where are your people, Colonel? With the train. It's dangerous outside. Contact them and tell them to take the train into the main airlock for decontamination. Welcome to the Ark, Colonel. Proceed through the tunnel and take the elevator. You'll be met inside. at least prepare a speech. Reporting to the minister is no joke. Ah, get off my case. I pulled an old nighter. <laughs> Don't you feel like you should say something to Artyom now? Yes. You were right, Artyom. And I was wrong. Thanks for not giving up. Minister, Commander of the Joint Special Operations Forces, Squadron of the City of Moscow, Colonel Miller, reporting. I would like to request that my people are provided with temporary quarters and supplies, as there are women and children among us. Still, our fighters are in top shape and ready for action. Women and children? <laughs> Good. Haven't had those in a while. Who are you? Plan. Everyone is fine. So far. So far? I I demand a, a meeting with the Minister of Defense now! Do not worry. Everything will be just fine. And even better. The Minister and the Chief himself are expecting you for dinner. Dinner? What the hell? Are you fucking mocking me? Shh. 
Shut up! The doctor is talking. <coughs> Where is the government's answer? All here, Colonel. All here. We are the government you people deserve. Don't you dare, you fuck! You're just... You're just fucking cannibals! Calm down, we'll get jaundice like this. And believe me, nobody likes that bitter taste. The girl will have to wait, though. We must run the tests first. I don't like that cough of hers. Untie my hands, you motherfucker! And I'll shove those tests so far up your ass, you'll be spitting Watch them. your tone, young lady. Do as that young man does. He woke up long ago, but quietly listens to wise people talk. Uh, you fucker! Let me... let me go! So, Colonel, now you will pick up the radio and tell the rest of your people on the train to come here. If you don't want her to suffer for a really long time before she is served. Do you understand? And here I was hoping for an intelligent conversation for a change. Alas. That's not a problem, though. Since this nice young man will surely do it instead. He won't dare be contradictory once we're done with you. Well, nice meeting you and all. Yakov, you may start. I'll get you even after I'm dead. That may well happen, Colonel. I could choke on you or something. In the meantime, I'll excuse you myself. Come here, I'll rip you all apart. Every last one of you should have done that before the war. But oh, I'll get you now. Burn this cup to ashes. Now we'll be full again. Good.
Just like our old D6. Even the lift is the same, exactly. True, and quite fortunate. This way, we can hope to find Anna. Still, the complex is huge, and we have ten minutes at the most. So, we'll have to split up. Sam, you check the filter room, the generator hall, and the storage. Idiot, you come with me to the command center. Artyom, you take the barracks and the sick bay.
Cooper. Artyom, I knew! <laughs> Behind you! There is always one like you! A hero! You're not saving anyone! Just like the others! So just freeze! Yes, yes! Th Let just, him just go! Don't kill me! Now! Uh, remember what I told you! There was an explosion. Enough chatter! <laughs> Uh, 
Are you all right, Artyom? Thank God. Let's report to the Colonel. Dad, it's me. Where are you? In the sick bay. Artyom found me. This whole situation, though. I thought we wouldn't see anything worse than that cult on the Volga. And that Silentius with his damned fanatics. But no. It appears there was still space for growth. We could have gotten killed there. We almost got eaten here. That bastard. Unbelievable. To think he used to be a doctor. Don't matter. We'll see what happens now. We did survive him, after all. But what do we do Holy now? Damned if I know, Anna. No idea. Have you found anything, idiot? The defense sites, HQs, all the information is outdated. All links are long gone. Still, the ones that light up worked for at least a few years after the war. What's down there? It's Caspian One, a comm center. There's one more just like that in Novosibirsk. <laughs> Are you going to drag us to some other bunker now? I don't know, Anna. We have to make the decision together. Did you get everything you could, idiot? We're leaving. One moment. I'll finish breaking everything here. Come on, come on! Okay, all done. Uh, 
I don't think you should have put it like that, Anna. It all worked out this time, didn't it? It worked out. It really did. My concern is what if next time it doesn't. <laughs> of course not. All the more reason to strive and spend more time of what is allotted to me with that guy over there. I've grown attached to him. This place is completely over. Time to go find the real government bunker, I guess. Oh, to think I believed those pricks from Hansa. I believed that Moscow was controlled by the HQ. That we were under occupation. That we were still in war. That there were generals here giving orders. What an idiot, Suka. I will repeat my question. What do we do now? Could we go back to Moscow? Tell them the truth about the war, the government. They'll shoot us on approach. And even if we do break through, what can we do against Hansa? Who'd believe us with no proof? <laughs> what about going back to Volga? We could live there. What do we do about the locals? They weren't exactly happy to see us there. Do we kill them all? Is anybody here up for that? Back in Moscow, Artyom had been dreaming of finding a habitable place and building a colony there. Isn't it time we got to it? The idea is good, but how do we find the place? Just keep traveling? The Aurora needs an overhaul. <coughs> what do we do if it breaks down? Satellites. What satellites? You want to leave the fucking planet? There's a satellite communication center on the Caspian Sea. It survived the war. Oh. And if we gain access to the data collected by the satellites... We won't have to travel randomly. <coughs> Radiation level maps, even your regular satellite photos could really help us out here. That's an idea. What if there is something worse than cannibals there? <coughs> could well be. But first, we're going to be really careful this time. And second, does anyone have any better ideas? 
I don't. Well, I guess we've got ourselves a new plan. Artyom, shall we look for that place you wanted? Huh? Sound the horn, then. <laughs> Three months on the road, three months of constant trial. But after Yamantau, we are ready for anything fate can throw at us. Mere kilometers separate us from the Caspian One communication center. Will the maps within yield a spot free from radiation where we could finally settle in peace? I don't know, but what's left for us but hope? The desert is taking its toll. The crew suffers from heat and thirst, and the Aurora is not in her top form. We're out of coal and had to switch to burning available fuel. Old cross ties and twigs 